first let's visit our previous bases. Bases. Our mining base. Let's run this in case I have to leave quickly. Run the oxygen. Just make a little bit. And where is my mining? There, uh, there it is. Just grab 1250 cobalt each day. It's enough to make some ion batteries at least. do the agricultural mission. Notice the ship is over this. It will interfere with that. Generally, the oxygen harvester should be away from stuff. Put it over there. Technology recharge. See that this is working. Leo, you have successfully cultivated solar vine, yes? I could smell its heat from here. It's incandescent splendor. Confirm, I give him 50 selenium, which I just harvested. Wonderful. Savor this moment, friend. For now, I lead you into a more dangerous realm of botanical study. Fungal cluster, a spherical fungus with internal gills found only in toxic biomes. Fungal clusters can be transplanted for cultivation, yielding a bountiful harvest. Suitable for hydrophonic indoor planting, ensure toxic climate before planting outdoors. Approximate growing time, four hours. So I'll need fungal mode 50 and ammonia 25 for each plant. Hireling in Leo. Fungal clusters are cultivated within toxic environments, but you have proved you can master much. Yes? Be careful as you work, friend. Clusters have been known to cause illness and hallucination if improperly handled. Extended exposure is ill-advised. Hireling Yin Leo wishes for me to use hydro the hydroponics tray to grow fungal clusters. I will accept the mission. Wonderful. While you prepare the fungal clusters, I will check our ventilation systems. One can have too much of a good thing. grow and harvest fungal clusters. But actually I'm going to do holographic romance now. Let's 
see I was on the base and the oxygen started back over. There's something wrong. Consult the galaxy map while in space to locate the survey location. To the current space station. Current mission. There. See the leaf? Reach moon with gold, that does look interesting. Ah, floral survey location. Let's stop off first at the space station. And I will name this Euclid DG. Euclid makes it easy to know which um, galaxy universe it is. Notice 120,000, but if I put it up here, it's 100,000. And I'm gonna work on expanding my exosuit. Life support and shield. Let's take an A class in for knife module. Damage two sixty three. Damage still two sixty three. And this gives plus 5% damage. Holographic Romance. And while we scan, because we have all of the additions to our, vis our visor will make money. And we could try and get the animals on this planet. Alright, one of eleven.
two of seven uh, fauna. So let's do a little bit of exploring here before we turn this in and see if we can grab the rest of the fauna on the planet. There's water there. Okay. This is a good spot. It's a relatively nice planet. The small creature is busy adding up trade profits when I appear. Sensing me, their eyes widen in anticipation, and they rub their fingers together greedily. Hello, friend. The Gek. The life form pecks emphatically at the monetary figures on their pad, then bounces up and down. A pleasant aroma fills the air, an echo of the floral scent that drenches this lush world. Well... I don't think tapping the pad or patting him on his head is going to thrill him, so I'll give him 100 units. The life form is clearly thrilled. They give me a piece of technology in exchange. I thought I just refilled that. We have just a common bird left. As I touch the obelisk, images of the planet's ancient past flood my mind. The terrible beginnings of the Gek have been absorbed by this strange stone, and their tale seems desperate to escape. 
All who hear our words know of our might. Those who oppose us are broken to our will. Behold the power of the Gek first spawn. Galaxies lie at our feet. We are eternal. I'll just seek help with knowledge. Uh, if you seek knowledge of the past, that you'll be able to make some money off of that, some cre uh, credits. My knowledge of the Gek increases. Notice my standing went up. Usually these help increase. There we go. There's our last bird. Okay. We found all the fauna. That's 1,750 nanites. Okay, now let's go turn in the mission. Journey milestone accomplished. Archivist discovered all species on seven planets. That's seven stars. Archivist. And in missions. that multi-tool slot. So, ghosts in the machine. Collect nanites to buy technology upgrades. And you see the red and white symbol? This is the system that we need to use to continue the Artemis path. Ghosts in the machine. the planet with the corrupted uh, drone corrupted sentinels is there nowhere to land We find the building. Yep, we found it. Returning user identified, terminal now active. Unlocking data log, continuation for analysis. So I believe raiding the building is accessing this terminal. Is there a connection between the monoliths and the sentinels? The original of these ancient structures seem to predate all known civilization. 
Over time, these structures have become imbued with the beliefs and the histories of the creatures that evolved around them. But what if there was a precursor species that came before us all, one of such infinite knowledge and interstellar power that even after their extinction, their tools remain for us to pour over like an infant confronted with a fusion reactor. Analyze data log. I discover something coded, something left that will aid me. And now that I got the nanites, notice the ghost in the machine collected nanites to buy technology upgrades is done. So now uh, the next step will be for us to go to a space station and buy a specific item. He seems keen to show me their new stock a powerful modification. So I offer 60 nanites. And I get a C-class upgrade. C-class upgrade and C-class. I'm just gonna sell those. Oh, I sold, it says install your upgrade module, and I sold that. Let me see if I can get an upgrade module that I can install. Take this scatter blaster and let's install. Ne notice a change when ready, return to space to make contact with Apollo. This thing will just dismantle this and take the wiring loop. are not alone. I know you, traveler. I know where you've been. I know where you're going. Well, that's kind of spooky. There is no need to hurry. All right, I ask who they are. You will find us when the time is right. Okay, whatever. All right, an incoming message. X, F. Are you ready? Make sure you are. This job isn't going to be a small one. You might not be heading back to that base of yours for a while. All right, I'll just confirm. Good, let the hunt begin. I've detected a Corvax installation on that world of yours. The interference in your transmissions is a giveaway. It might be 
disguised in the style of another species, but don't be fooled. The synthetics delight in espionage. Well, uh, um, let me point out that Apollo is robotic. I'm not robotic. I was born just like you were. But this is no world for flesh. My brain, what organs I have left. Everything was transferred to this shell. This is who I am. Um, rather than acting all pitiful, I'll just ask how this happened. I took my revenge when the time came. That is all you need to know. So, start from the hypothesis that the Sentinels used these portals to get around. How did they activate it? We need to observe. We need to summon them. And what better way than to attack a secret Corvax factory? They are both robotic life forms. Too much in common, too much coincidence. Enter the factory and hack the terminal within. If we gain data about the Sentinels, good. If not, we have summoned enough of them to trace any energy spikes on that world of yours. The portals will be ours in no time. I download the facility location. Apollo nods at me. For the first time, I sense respect in their gesture. The approximate coordinates for the hidden facility are logged to my starship's navigation computer. All right, so the coordinates have been received. They're in this system of all things. All right, well. What kind of planet is this? Basically, it spawns the mission in the system you're in. So you should go to a system you want to be and then contact Apollo. There's the facility, obviously. So why would I land away from that? And I get a free takeoff by landing at the landing pad. It won't cost me any launch fuel. Let's check our ammo for this. All right, as long as I'm over 5,000, I'm usually happy. Chromatic metal and sodium available. And ferrite, pure ferrite. The terminal houses an upgrade module for my exosuit. However, I find a few clues for Apollo. It seems the Corvax within left this world many days ago apparently recalled on a priority transmission to their species flotilla. Something has them worried, so I probed the factory logs. This place seems to have been more than just a factory. It was a home to the Corvax who lived within its walls. It appears that they were experimenting with autonomy from their collective. I examined the video feeds. One of the internal sensors has recorded movement within the facility. It shows me footage of the vents at my feet. There is something in here with me. I shine a light upon it. I shine a light upon it. It is a small hairy creature shaking and afraid it cries out. The animal appears to have lived here for quite some time. There is a nest in the corner, vestiges of food upon a small dish, even a few clumsy toys and trinkets. The animal seems to have been a companion to the Corvax. 
My scanner tells me that the creature is gravely ill. It will die no matter what intervention occurs. Then um, I will do nothing. I do nothing for the creature, it begins to cry, but even that soon fades. Eventually it retreats back into the darkness of its tunnels. I move on from the factory complex, leaving the animal to its fate. X, F. Good work. Your attack on that factory paid off. Did you get any useful data? I'll ask what happens next. I recorded countless signal flares when the sentinels started to appear. Energy streams sparked beneath the planet's surface, moving from monolith to monolith. We must be on the right track. Examine these structures. They are all linked. I know it. I'll attune your scanner to the sentinel energy signals. We shall soon have our prey. Good luck. I'll speak, I'll speak to you on the other side. And communication. Bring word of the Apollo plan to NADA. In space, summon the anomaly from the quick menu. See the purple? That's where you go to, which is NADA. Hundred thousand, hundred and twenty. I'll grab one up here. What new knowledge, traveler? Is Apollo entity known to you? I explain Apollo's plan. A traveler entity that is not known to Nada, yet they know Artemis entity who themselves no longer recalls Nada. You bring news that alarms Nada. What else does our home fail to see? Nada looks troubled. They retreat into themselves. So I ask what to do. Polo friend has kept us safe. Nada's carapace has been Nada's and Nada's only for many years outside the cycle of data. We help others escape. Those who might process our reality. Nada has peace here. Those who hunt us cannot see us. Nada does not want it to end. But better to understand, to know what comes for us. Do not stop on our account. All right, so it wants me to search and continue with Apollo's plan. In the next episode, we will continue with the Atlas Path and do some of A Leap in the Dark. Oh, it just changed from Ghosts in the Machine to A Leap in the Dark. Okay, so we're in the next chapter. These titles are different chapters in the Artemis line. All right, so the next episode, A Leap in the Dark and the Atlas Path. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.